Good morning and welcome back. My name's Simon and in this video I want to do a comparison of two popular wood burning stoves, the Honey Stove and the Firebox Generation 2 stove. I've been using the honey stove for about three or four years. I love it, it's a great stove, um, but as with all things, nothing is totally perfect. Uh, and uh, you know, this has, this has some drawbacks in my mind, um, but I have gotten really well with the stove generally. Um, the firebox I received in the post three days ago. Okay, I've yet to light it. I've literally taken it out of the packaging played around with it um, but I haven't uh, I haven't actually used it yet okay so um, it's not really a review of the firebox it's just a kind of first impressions and a comparison between this and the stove that I am really familiar with the honey stove okay let's start with the honey stove it comes in this nylon pouch Here you have all the components with a couple that I added. So to put the honey stove together, you get all these components. You get the sides, you get a front with a, with a door for loading your wood in, and you get a base, essentially, okay? The way I like to put it together, there's different ways, different, different uh, methods of doing this, but I like to put all the side pieces together first, with the exception of the door. They just slot in, slot together like this. I like to put five of the pieces together because it forms a hexagon, so there's six sides. And on the base, there's one, there's one edge which doesn't have one of these little notches in, okay? So that is the front. That's the one that you want to aim towards the side that doesn't have a side piece on yet. Okay, so I've got that far. And then the door then just slides in place like this okay and there you have the, the honey stove together okay and then you've got um, a grill that you can put on the top for cooking directly over the coals to support your pot um, the idea is that you then use tent pegs and they would go through uh, these holes which run up each side of the honey stove um, there's a, a slot so that you can move the base up and down um, or the trencher support which I'll talk about later um, but on each end of the slot there's a hole and, um, and, and you're supposed to be able to slide a tent peg in there now I found that tent pegs were a bit big for those holes so I made two uh, pot supports myself out of brick ties that brick, bricklayers use to, uh, to tie the outer skin and the inner skin of brickwork together in a cavity wall uh, I just cut one end of each off and they slide through nicely. So you just literally slide them through, making sure they're on the same level. And you've got a support for a, for a, a billy can or a, a cup or whatever you're using. Putting it together is a bit of a faff. Um, and uh, you know, under normal conditions, it's all right. And once you've practiced it a few times, it's, it's no problem, but um, Last winter I went on a I went on a three day walk and I took this as my main source of my main my main stove um, and, and uh, method of cooking and um, and one of the days it was particularly cold and when I stopped at the end of the day and, and set up camp my hands were, were just so numb from the cold I had real difficulty in getting this together I just couldn't slot all these pieces together easily again it took me quite a while it's not hinged or anything it doesn't fold you've literally got to assemble it. Okay. Okay, the firebox stove. You simply pull out these two fire sticks. Uh, open the firebox up like this. The ash pan then falls off. You open it up like that, and that is it. That's it done. Okay, so it's really, really straightforward. The ash pan just slides in there. 
It's really straightforward. There's no fiddly bits to slot together. It's all together, it's all hinged, so you just open it up. The uh, ash um, pan there, just uh, not the ash pan, the, the, the bottom of the stove just falls down uh, into position, and then you've got, this is a little baffle here, um, and then you've got your fire sticks which come with it, which you can just, um, you can just slide into the slot that you want to cook on. Okay, so in terms of putting that together, it doesn't really get much simpler. Okay, onto packability. The um, honey stove uh, is quite compact. It comes in a, a little pouch that uh, measures about uh, six inches by six inches, or roughly 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's small, it's flat, uh, fits in your pack nicely, um, and it weighs just under um, 300 grams. So very, very light, very light indeed. Um, great for Sort of like lightweight backpacking um, or where, where weight is an issue. The firebox measures about five inches across. That's the, uh, the size of the actual stove itself, incidentally. It's about five inches across by about seven and a half. Okay, so it's narrower but taller than the, the honey stove. Um, but the real difference you'd notice is the weight. Okay, the firebox is much heavier. This is really, really quite lightweight, the, the honey stove. The firebox is four times heavier, okay? This is nearly a kilogram, just, just for the stove itself. If you add the extra kit, which I chose to go for, which has a boil plate and a grill, and extra fire sticks in the pouch, it bumps it up to 1,200 grams. Okay, so it's a weighty bit of kit, but that's because it's well made, okay? Um, it's thicker gauge steel, there's more to it, there's, hit, there's hinge, hinges, <coughs> there's baffles, there's bits and bobs that you have on the firebox that you don't have on the honey stove, okay? So that's what bumps the weight up lightweight but more rugged right I also wanted to compare these two um, as to how versatile they are using different fuels okay um, both of them are designed to work with uh, wood as their main fuel but um, you can use other fuels with them as well the honey stove comes with this plate here um, and that's designed just to, to slot into these uh, slots on the on the outside um, walls of the of the stove okay and it creates a place where you can use a trangia burner okay and that just literally slots in um, and then you can use your uh, your pot support as usual and cook over it using uh, a spirit burner okay I haven't tried to see whether other types of um, burner will fit in this but it's, it's primarily designed for for the transit because that's probably the most popular one that's in use okay so that just sits in there like this on the on the firebox they've also designed this so that you can use it with um with a transia burner and and on the side of the firebox you'll see there's all these different slots okay um, and if you put them in the middle ones the middle sort of like row of vertical ones like this then the transia burner will slot nicely in there and it's just tight enough to grip it okay and then if you um if you went for the upgrade kit like i did you've then got additional fire sticks that you can use above to form a, a pot stand okay put your put your pot on the top there you could of course lower that down just like you can with this you know, there's different slots, so you can adjust the height of the burner. You can adjust the height of the burner here by, by moving these fire sticks down into different slots and having the whole lot lower down so that the stove acts as a windshield as well, okay? Obviously, like that, it's a bit high. Although you do have this baffle here, so if the wind was coming from this direction, you could close that baffle up there and create a bit of a wind break um, to stop the, the flame from being blown all over the place. Okay, so they both work really well with the Tranger burner. Okay, if you want to use solid fuel, like these um, Esbit uh, Hexamin blocks or, or the uh, Fire Dragon solid fuel or, um, or any of those uh, solid fuel blocks, any Hexamin blocks, um, they're both set up so you can do that as well. With the honey stove, the idea is that you just take your block and you put it directly on the, on the bottom of the, um, 
of the, of the stove itself. And then obviously you can lower down your pot supports so that you're at the right height. Okay, so you can have your pot supports down here. So your pot is sitting lower in and getting the heat at the correct height. The other alternative is that you can move this because of these slots in the side of the honey stove, you can actually move the base further up. So you can have the whole thing sitting higher up um, and, uh, and, and therefore your, your hexi block will be sitting sort of like up here somewhere, okay? So that works really well, it's quite simple to do. Uh, Firebox came up with a slightly different system. Um, they give you these fire sticks which slot into the very top slots up here, okay? There's ones right at the very top there and you just put a fire stick through, you use the um, ash pan, just sits on top of that, okay, and that creates a platform onto which you can put your uh, solid fuel, okay. Um, you can then use your other fire sticks, just as you did with the Trangier, to create a pot uh, stand on the top, and you can adjust the burn using this damper here, okay. So if you've got if you've got a bit of breeze, you can use that to help you. Um, and you can, you can position the, um, the solid fuel on this plate, depending on what the conditions are. So for grilling, um, both of them again, um, designed so that you can grill food, cook food directly over um, the coals after you've let um, whatever you're burning, your, you know, your wood uh, die down to coals, down, down to embers. Um, so honey, the honey stove supply you with uh, this stainless steel uh, six inch by six inch uh, grill, which literally just sits on the top. Straightforward, no messing around, just sits there, you can cook directly on it, okay? And that is supplied with the honey stove. Firebox, the grill is an extra, okay? So you have to you have to buy that in addition to it. Now I, I, I opted for the um, the upgrade kit, so I, I got one of these when I bought it, um, but you can buy these extra if you want to start with the basic kit. Um, and that simply slots in place. There's a little T on the top to make sure you get it the right way up and that slots in place and there's a little notch so that it's held in place okay so it won't fall off all right so that's quite it's quite a good little feature and um, and you know you just just exactly as you would with the honey stove you'd have your fire in there you'd let it die down to embers you cook directly on the top. Okay so in use I've just preloaded these up and got them going with some sticks. Both sto stoves work best with sort of like pencil to finger sized, and they're certainly no bigger than sort of like thumb sized sticks. Um, and uh, yeah, you preload them um, with your wood. There's different ways of doing that. You can either start uh, with your tinder on the bottom and load them up as you would a no normal fire, putting the fuel on the top. Um, or you can um, put your fuel in first and light a fire on top of the fuel and let it burn down through the fuel. Um, different ways of doing it. But um, once you're going, obviously you're going to need to start feeding these with fire with uh, with fuel. Um, so the honey stove has a really nice big opening on the front. Makes it really easy to feed your fuel in, even when you have a pot on it. So if I just put my pot supports in and put a billy can on the top. You'll see what I mean. So there we go. I can continue feeding fuel underneath to keep that fire going, okay? The um, firebox stove is slightly different. There's, there's two different ways that you can feed fuel on here. So let me just put some fire sticks in and transfer that pot onto the firebox. Um, you can either, there's two, there's two um, fuel feed holes here and you can simply just place your fuel through um, either side or both sides uh, or you can just feed through the little damper here, there's a baffle and you can, uh, you can feed sticks through there as well. Okay, so there's two different ways of feeding it, although the openings are smaller, they seem to be accepting the, the size of sticks that you want to be using on, on a small stick stove anyway so uh, yeah all good. Now with regards to uh, heat adjustment and flame adjustment um, there's very little on the on the honey stove. It is what it is. You could you could use a, a windbreak perhaps 
and uh, and control the amount of air getting to it. Um, but really, it's just gonna it's gonna burn at the rate that you keep feeding sticks onto it. Um, and obviously, you've got adjustment in heat on your pot, um, depending on where you put your pot support stick uh, su pot support um, pegs through. Okay, so you can obviously raise it up if it's getting too hot. With the firebox, um, they've very cleverly included a little damper at the top here, which you can close off, and also a damper at the bottom. Now the ash pan that comes with it, you can use with two fire sticks and create a sliding damper. And you can slide the ash pan and close off the amount of air getting to the underside and regulate it, or you can open it up and allow more air in to get the, to get the fire really roaring, okay? or close it down by, by sliding that across. So you've got two different forms of, um, of heat adjustment uh, with the firebox, which is quite nice. I haven't obviously had a chance to play around with it yet because this is the first time I've used it. So um, this is first burn test for me, um, but I will, uh, I'm looking forward to having a play around with that and seeing, seeing what effect those dampers have on, um, on the heat getting to the pot. And obviously you can raise that up as well. You can raise the pot up and down you can get it closer down to the um, to the to the fire as well. I really like the fact that the honey stove is is lightweight, and I will definitely be keeping hold of the honey stove for that reason. There's times when I'm going to be I'm not going to be wanting to carry a kilo of stove with me every time. Um, so you know, 250 260 grams um, is not a lot of weight to carry. You don't even notice that. You know, you can put that in your pocket and you wouldn't even know it's there. Um, this, on the other hand, has is, is, got a bit of weight to it. But I have no doubt that this is going to last. You know, the steel on the um, honey stove, although I've never had a problem with it, it, it distorts a little bit in use, but it doesn't affect how it works. Um, it's, it's thin gauge steel, um, but I think if you, uh, accident, if you accidentally tripped over this or trod on it, it would, be, it would be ruined, it would just bend, you could probably bend it back, but you know, it's gonna, it's gonna flatten it, it's gonna pancake it completely. This one here, it's, it's heavy gauge, okay, it's gonna last. You're not gonna have any problems with this. And um, yeah, it's full of technology. I'm quite looking forward to getting to grips with it and working out, you know, how all these baffles are gonna work and, and what effect they'll have on, on cooking. So uh, yeah, two fantastic stoves. If you want a lightweight stove for backpacking, go for the honey stove. It's also cheaper, it's about 38 pounds on the Woodlaw website. Um, Firebox, a bit more expensive, it's 55 pounds. You can get that from the Bushcraft, Bushcraft store, amongst other places. So I mentioned about there being a boil ring, a boil plate. That's what this is, okay, that is an extra. That slots in at the top here. Uh, and you use one of your fire sticks just to help it in, like that. And, um, and basically, it allows you to, to cook using um, one of the sort of nesting cups that go with the Nalgene uh, size bo uh, water bottles, um, and it just closes it off a little bit more and you get more contained heat on the bottom of the cup. Show you how that works. So you put your cup in here, and you know, you're not getting heat loss out the side, it's all being directed to the bottom of the cup. And that works equally well if you have a, a stainless steel water bottle. You can stick that in there and you can boil a whole litre of water if you've got water to sterilise. Another nice feature about the honey stove is that, um, you know, this is the configuration um, that you have it set up for burning wood. But um, if you wanted to streamline that even more, you can just use it with four sides, i.e. three solid sides and the front and not use two sections or the large hexagonal base and instead you can use a little square base that they provide with it. Okay so yeah there you have a really small wood burning stove okay so you can still feed through the front um, and you know your pot would sit directly on top of that. Okay, perhaps more suited to um, a smaller pot, like one of these cups that fits over your water bottle, okay, that you can then feed wood in this way. Um, but in addition to that, 
You can go even lighter still if you're planning on using a trenger burner because you don't need the base plate. The trenger burner will actually sit inside and is held in place by the um, by the slots in the side of the in the side of the stove. Okay, so you can just you can just use that directly with your pot on the top. It's a really compact micro stove. Okay, so that's quite nice. It's, it's quite versatile in that sense. You can have it as the full the full honey stove, or you can have a much more compact four sided stove. So, in summary, the honey stove very lightweight, cheaper, um, but basic. You know, it's it's not got all the uh, adjustment that you have on the other stove, um, so it's just very simple. But perhaps that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, super lightweight. So if you're if you're after a, a lightweight stove for backpacking, where weight is critical, I would suggest this is the one to go for. It's a great little stove. Like I say, I've had it for three or four years. I've never had a problem with it, except for putting it together sometimes with cold hands. It could be a bit of a fiddle. But uh, yeah, good little stove. The firebox, more expensive, and uh, you just get the basic model. If you want the other bits and pieces, you have to pay extra for them. Um, but very well thought out, lots of adjustment with the sliding baffle in the bottom and the, and the little damper here. Um, different ways to feed wood in, either through these two holes here or through the top. Um, good stove, robust, easy to pack away easy to put together, but heavy. There are great videos out there on YouTube if you just type in honey stove or a folding firebox stove. Uh, firebox, the company that makes the stove, uh, have produced a whole load of um, really good videos on, on using the firebox and uh, some of the accessories that you can get to go with it. Um, so yeah, check them out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.